One of the most iconic tales in evolutionary biology is the evolution of birds from dinosaurs. A major innovation which occurred along this arc was the evolution of flight, but why birds first evolved wings has been a long-standing mystery. For bats, it's very clear how flight evolved. They jumped from trees in a manner similar to flying squirrels, colugos, and sugar gliders in Australia. These animals, of course, don't use powered flight, but it's easy to see how they could be seen as a transitional form between an arboreal and a flying animal, and how this starting point could give rise to the wings of a bat. As for birds, we've seen dinosaurs closely related to them like dromaeosaurs have proportionally longer arms than other theropods. Furthermore, they had bumps on the ulna known as quill knobs, which anchor the muscles which extend and retract the flight feathers in modern birds. This means that many non-avian dinosaurs had quote-unquote flight feathers too, although there's no way they could provide sufficient lift to get these dinosaurs airborne. So, why do they have these feathers and longer forelimbs? One hypothesis is that they use them to bite into the wind while running at high speed in order to allow for tighter turns in a manner similar to an ostrich. While the dinosaurs, very closely related to the ancestors of birds, had more developed muscles in the chest area and could use their wings for this, some of the slightly more distantly related dinosaurs didn't have more musculature, but still had the longer forelimbs and flight feathers. If they tried to use their forelimbs to turn at high speeds, it would cause the joints a lot of strain. So what were they for? Well, it turns out the answer had been hiding in plain sight. Enter Oviraptor, one of these dinosaurs with flight feathers, but not more muscles around the forelimb, whose name means egg thief, a name which it got because the type specimen was found close to what was thought to be a protoceratops nest it was raiding. But then we found another Oviraptor skeleton that was flash buried by a sandstorm, and this was again found in proximity to a nest. But it didn't appear to be raiding it, and instead it was sitting on it in a position a chicken sits on its eggs with the flight feathers covering the eggs themselves. Then paleontologists realized that the nest near the oviraptor type specimen was its nest, and more importantly, the dinosaurs originally evolved wings to incubate their eggs and brood their offspring. The reason that this answer is quote-unquote hiding in plain sight is because birds still use their wings for this to the present day. Birds and mammals evolved many features convergently, such as warm-bloodedness, higher intelligence, better hearing, more complex vocalizations, and most poignant here, yeah, extensive parental care. Mammals famously evolved mammary glands to provide nutrition for their young, hence the name mammal. While newly hatched birds have more developed digestive systems than newborn mammals, their thermoregulatory systems are comparatively underdeveloped, and thus they have to be brooded under their parents' wing to stay warm. Furthermore, while nursing their young stimulates the release of bonding and relaxing hormones in mammals, brooding their offspring elicits a very similar hormonal response in birds. So, wings originally evolved as an auxiliary reproductive structure, one that aids in rearing of the young, essentially a loose avian analog of the mammary gland. This would make the use of bird wings for flight a form of exaptation, or where a structure adopts a different function than what it originally evolved for. However, this would be an unusual case, since birds also use their wings for their original purpose. This may also explain some things about bird behavior. In 85% of bird species, the male partakes in parental care, while this is only the case in 6% of mammal species. Well, if both sexes have to have the auxiliary reproductive structure for its secondary function, in this case flight, they might as well both use them for their primary function. Not only that, the evolution of flight would allow bird wings to grow larger than they could otherwise, meaning they could effectively brood larger clutches of eggs and produce more offspring. Before this, dinosaurs could theoretically have larger forelimbs and flight feathers to incubate more eggs at once, but this would come at the cost of making them top-heavy and hampering their mobility. In a parallel, if a mammal had large mammary glands, sure they could produce more milk, but it would also cause some problems. The wings of modern birds of course make them very top-heavy, which hampers their mobility on the ground, but being flight-capable more than makes up for this. 
So being able to brood larger clutches would be quote unquote icing on the cake. Furthermore, bird wings are a bit of an oddity in the history of flight evolution. Powered flight has evolved at least three times in vertebrates, that being in birds, bats, and pterosaurs. Two other lineages of vertebrates got close, being the Mesozoic mammal Ichthyoconodon and another variety of dinosaur known as E. chi. In all of these cases, except for birds, the wing evolved from skin membranes between the fingers and forelimb bones. If bird wings were originally used to aid in locomotion, they probably would have evolved from skin membranes as well, but their utilization for an unrelated function can also explain the seeming anomaly. If you want a full breakdown of this, you can see the video, It's Becoming Very Clear That Birds Are Not Normal, by PBS Eons. Well, I wanted to make this video to elucidate how exaptation can cause answers to long-standing questions about evolutionary biology to elude us, yet seem so obvious in hindsight. On top of that, it's arguably one of the cutest stories in evolutionary biology.